Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you were able to join us either on Facebook Live or Zoom. And we're actually here at the pre-service meditation. So we're going to meditate for about 10 minutes and then service will begin. So I invite you right now to get still in your bodies, to close your eyes, and let's just take a nice deep breath together. And as we release that breath, let us release any thoughts of what's come up to this moment, the activities of the day. Again, taking in a nice deep breath. And as we release it, let's release any thoughts or concerns about what is yet to come. Just bringing our awareness to this present moment. Using the breath as an anchor as a focal point, just focusing on the in-breath and the out-breath, you may silently say to yourself, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. You might notice the sensations in the body, the in-breath, how the belly, the chest expand. And as we release that breath, just feeling the contraction. And inevitably, the mind has a tendency to wander, to get engaged in thoughts. And when that happens, when you notice, this is the opportunity to cultivate that witness consciousness, that ability to notice what's going on in your mind, in your thoughts. Maybe notice if there are feelings, emotions associated with those thoughts. And just be with them for a moment. Just notice. Try not to judge. And then after being and observing those thoughts for a few moments. Just bring your awareness back to the breath. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, back into your body temple. Maybe shrug your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes. Take a nice deep breath and bring your attention back into this service. So thank you to all of you who have joined us during the meditation. Welcome. We're so glad you're with us here for our Wednesday evening service. Let's begin, as we always do, with our opening chant, God is in this place, led by Jamie Lula. Jamie and Sam. Mm, so let's take this opportunity to join in prayer, turning our attention inward. Just letting those words really soak into our consciousness that God is in this place because God is everywhere. God is the very life vibration out of which all creation comes into being and that expresses itself throughout the universe, that everything and everyone is filled with the nature of the divine, including each of us gathered for our service this evening. And indeed, God is ever-present, flowing throughout our time together, that it is God's love that we feel as we sense that feeling of community and connection with one another. It is God's love that moves through all of the volunteers who are of service. It is God unfolding through Sam and Jamie and uplifting us with their artistry, their creativity. And I know that I stand here as a vessel through which the divine word is spoken, that the message that comes through today is a message that we have all come to hear, myself included, to have that greater knowingness, a greater experience, a greater realization of God's nature in us, and to carry that realization into our lives, to experience that God nature more fully. And so I give thanks right in this moment for all the blessings that I know we receive during this service, and in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is already so in the mind of God. Our time is blessed, and so it is. Amen. And so I invite you now to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Walk a mile or a minute in another man's shoes. He's got a path to take to find his truth. And the way you spin it, he's a lot like you. Finding his faith on roads that you'd never choose. Keep on walking. Keep on walking.
Thank you, Jamie. I almost kept on walking. Oh, no. <laughs> so tonight I'm looking at this idea of pedestals be gone. So that great mystic, Dolly Parton. <laughs> well, I think she is. She's got a beautiful heart. But uh, she stated once, apparently, after Mama gave birth to 12 of us kids, we put her on a pedestal. It was mostly to keep Daddy away from her. <laughs> so maybe sometimes putting people on pedestals has its merits. But tonight I wanted to look at how that's not usually the case. You know, as wonderful as it is for us to acknowledge the ways that various individuals bless our lives or bless the world, building them up to the point of thinking that they are flawless in our minds is really, really not a kind and loving thing to do. It's actually very restrictive. The moment they show up and don't live up to our expectations, they show up in a way that we don't approve of, you know, something that we would never imagined about them suddenly comes through and we don't appreciate it, guess what happens? They really fall off that pedestal in our eyes. They kind of go from praise to contempt. Haven't we seen that happen any number of times with celebrities that are held up in such high regard until we learn something about some human flaws that they have and then, wow, all of a sudden they're the most evil thing that ever was created. The poet, Margaret Atwood, stated, if you're put on a pedestal, you're supposed to behave yourself like a pedestal type of person. Pedestals actually have a limited circumference not much room to move around. So if you need a visual, pedestal, it's made of plastic. <laughs> Just in case you were gonna put me on a pedestal for being so macho and uh, butch for being able to lift this. <laughs> like you'd ever think that. Okay, <laughs> up here, not a whole lot of room to move. I don't think any of us would want to be put up here and having to stay up here. Doesn't give us a lot of room for expression. And so holding others in high esteem is loving only if we can continue to love them when we know that they have human flaws just like us and that possibly some of those flaws are quite serious. That's possible. You know, we all come into this earth plane, or the vast majority of us, with things in our consciousness that we have come here to learn to heal. God's nature in us is one of unconditional love. We say that over and over again. And so our spiritual evolution involves learning to love as unconditionally as possible in order to have the most expansive experience of God's love in us. You know, how often have we seen some dark, dark area of a celebrity exposed, where, as I was talking about before, they went from being admired to being totally condemned? Those are examples of the mindset that says, oh, you're lovable based on these incredible human talents and gifts that you have, but your flaws and foibles make you unlovable. So here's what's happening from a spiritual perspective when we fall into this pattern of putting people on pedestals and then knocking them off. You know, in Science of Mind, we keep reiterating over and over again the core um, very core tenet of our philosophy is that God is present in everything and everyone. So even this type of situation and putting people on pedestals, that behavior has to have some element of God's nature in it. And the way I would explain that is that the impulse 
to value, to appreciate, to admire others' gifts. At the very core, that's God's impulse of love to give of itself and take in of itself. When we're admiring people, when we're appreciating people, it's God in us showing love and appreciation for another version of itself and feeling good about sharing that love. But when it comes to a place when that love turns to contempt, when the person that we're admiring so much doesn't live up to our expectations, that's really coming from an unhealed place in us. That's coming from something in us that needs to be dealt with. In essence, what we're saying when we do that is, you need to be this way. You need to show up in this way. And I'm projecting upon you all these qualities that when I see that in you, it makes me feel so good. It inspires me. It uplifts me and all of that. It gives me you know, a sense of peace and joy. You need to be like that for me to feel good, for me to feel inspired and uplifted or peaceful. Now, I want to make it clear that it's not that we shouldn't object or uh, take action toward preventing others from doing harm to others, but you know, I was, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, how often do we hear when in these situations where, you know, someone really falls from grace in the public's eyes, in our eyes, how often do we hear discussions like, this individual has such gifts, how unfortunate that they have this darkness in them that needs to be healed. What, what can be done for those like this person or for this person themselves to, to heal that? What can be done to avoid that from happening again and more harm being caused in the world? In other words, do we bring a perspective that God's nature lies in these beings just as it does in us and is greater than their transgressions? Do we ask those kinds of questions? And do we remind ourselves that God's nature in me is untouched by others' transgressions. I am not dependent on someone else being a certain way for me to feel God's nature and to experience it and express it in my life. I can take human steps to deter them, to try to deter them from humanly doing harm to me or others. But at the same time, I can also know that God in them is greater than the behaviors that I'm objecting to. That's still holding things in a vibration of love without you know, just trying to make everything sweet and pretty and everything's OK when it's not humanly. Now, as ministers and practitioners in this denomination, we are mandated reporters, which means that just like therapists and other uh, uh, healthcare professionals, we are required to report certain kinds of human transgressions, such as if we learn of child abuse, elder abuse, dependent uh, adult abuse. Um, those are some of the things that we need to report. We need to report if someone tells us they're going to go out and, and do bodily harm to someone. So we are required to report those things to uh, the authorities. But I remember a minister addressing a group of practitioners that was saying, you know, it seems challenging to one minute be holding the consciousness that God is in this individual. They are big, God is bigger than their behavior, and at the same time be calling the authorities. And the re minister reminded the group that that doesn't mean that you stop praying for that person. That doesn't mean that you might not be there to support them through the process and to do whatever you can to facilitate their healing. So there was this idea of, yes, there may be human steps that we take when people misbehave or do things that are harmful. 
But do we remember that there's a godly presence in them that we want to try to facilitate support in coming forth? I would offer the idea that even when the pattern of admiring and then, and then condemning others isn't as dramatic as worshiping and then chastising someone, how often do we project our false beliefs of needing others to be a certain way, projecting upon them, you know, okay, this person is this for me, they're my strength, they're my this, they're my hero, blah, blah, blah. How often do we project that and tell ourselves that we need them to be that for us to hold them in the light and for us to feel good? Don't we sometimes project that onto our spouses, our partners, parents, children, friends, bosses, coworkers, etc., etc., etc.? In truth, the person you put on a pedestal also suffers because they're carrying your expectations on their back. And the other part of this is that every time we do that, subliminally, we're reinforcing the message in our own consciousness that we are judged based upon our human strengths and weaknesses. So not only are we denying our own divine nature by demanding others to be a certain way for us to feel good, we also inwardly get caught in the trap of trying to live up to others' confining expectations of us because we buy into this belief that, oh, okay, I'm valued for this. I can't ever show anyone this other side of me. This can lead to us hiding or trying to deny and suppress our own human flaws versus bringing them into the light for healing. So I really think it would behoove us all to take note of individuals whom we admire and from whom we have maybe some really great expectations. And when we identify those people in our con consciousness, adopt the attitude of I admire the way that God's wisdom, creativity, beauty, love, whatever those qualities are, are expressed through you. And just like me, I'm sure you have some human traits that don't reflect the best of who you can be. You know, I believe that you too probably have things you need to heal. May you discover the truth of God's nature in you that's greater than those flaws. Imagine if we all approached others with that mindset. It's almost to be another version of the Hindu greeting that I think is so beautiful, the namaste, which says the divine in me honors the divine presence in you and in that, we're also saying that that presence is greater than any of your human foibles and frailties. When we find others putting us on pedestals as well, when we get hooked by the idea that we're valued for certain traits and we're fearful of admitting to our flaws or maybe so showing some other aspects of our nature that you know, we don't feel they really admire us for, I think it's important to, okay, be gracious and grateful for whatever you know, positive feedback we get for the qualities that they admire. But inwardly, I think we need to have the consciousness that these are aspects of God's nature. It's not my creativity. It's not my love. These are aspects of God's nature in me. And there are many other aspects of God's nature in me. And there are also ways that I'm still growing and evolving. When we do that, we give ourselves a lot more space. You know, by honoring and celebrating our gifts and others' gifts while knowing that God's nature in us is infinitely greater. So whatever, you know, I, 
I love seeing someone who can play guitar and sing and create their own music and all of that. But there is way more creativity and many more ways that God's nature is expressed through that individual. You know, and by further knowing that we all have unhealed areas. Jamie, get up here and let us hear about some. No. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> we all have unhealed areas and ways that God's nature isn't fully expressed, but the potential for it to come forth is still there. It's greater than our transgressions, and those can be healed. When we adopt that kind of mindset, we then move into a much, much more expansive experience of love than can ever be experienced on a pedestal. So let's take a moment to turn our attention inward. And I invite you to call to mind anyone whom you hold in high regard and that you might feel betrayed or hurt by if they turned out to not show up in ways that you expect. And I invite you to take a moment to acknowledge that just like you, this person demonstrates some of God's qualities well, but probably also has their fears, their insecurities, those dark areas in their consciousness that they need to overcome. And so they might not always show up the way you expect them to. And remind yourself that God's nature in you is greater than any disappointment you may experience from another. And it's also greater than the transgressions of others. So you can hold that light of truth for yourself and for them. And I also invite you to take this opportunity to notice Areas where you feel confined by others' admiration, that maybe they admire your strength so you can never show any sign of vulnerability, or they have expe expectations of you to be a certain way. And feel grateful for whatever qualities of God that operate through you that they appreciate. But remember that God's nature in you is greater than any human traits they appreciate. And like others, you have your flaws that you're learning to overcome humanly. So just feel the freedom of being able to be honest and authentic with yourself and giving yourself greater room for self-expression. So that you can be honest with yourself and be open to addressing any areas that you have yet to heal. And in so doing, we put aside those pedestals and open to greater love. And so from this place, let us join in knowing that that presence of God that is greater than all our human gifts and talents that are all given to us by God, they're greater as well than any of our human flaws and traits, that that potential of God's infinite good lies at the center of all creation, all beings, everywhere, including every one of us gathered for this virtual service this evening. So let us know that where there are those struggling with any sense of change being uncomfortable, that God's nature is right there to be revealed, that things on the human plane are always changing, nothing is permanent, including our human lives, but the life of God in us is permanent, never changes and is always 
ready to come forth and be experienced and expressed in a new way. That presence is also a vibration of perfect health and wholeness. So where there is any situation of dis-ease or discord, let us know the truth that that vibration of well-being is right there to be revealed. We know that this essence of spirit is infinitely creative. It is always giving of itself unto itself through us. And so for those who are feeling creatively challenged or unable to be in their right place to give what they have to give, we know that God is there ready to give through each and every one of us so that we're all guided to the perfect right places to give of spirit's nature in our unique ways and be valued and appreciated and a blessing to the world. Let us remember that this essence of God is infinite, and so there is no lack or limitation in the divine. And so where there are those experiencing any kind of lack or limitation, let us know the truth that that infinite giver and receiver of the universe lives in all of us. So we see an expansion of that capacity to give and receive and be sourced and supplied beyond need. And let us absolutely remember that the essence of this one is pure love so that we can all open to it and experience a greater sense of love for the divine creations of God that we each are, for one another, for life itself. And knowing that the impulse of love is always for greater good, let us honor that impulse by setting our intentions for greater good in silence. So whatever these ideas of greater good may be, let us know that we're feeling the impulse of God for greater knowingness and realization of itself. God is right there in every one of these situations. And as we know this truth, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's with a heart just filled, filled with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it's already so in the mind of God, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggles, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggles, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. So this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. And uh, just a quick reminder of the ways that you can give. Uh, first of all, after service, we'll be here for about 15 minutes to take donations over the phone. If you'd like to call in to 818-762-7566 to give a credit or a debit card, we can uh, take it over the phone. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to the page where you can make a one-time or a recurring set up uh, recurring donations, or you can text the word give to area code 818 
457-3419. And as always, any ways that you are continuing to give, we just so appreciate it so we can continue to be here and do this work in consciousness together. So with that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts, our intentions for giving to our hearts, as we say. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Let our joy, let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Rest in God and Ah, so as we start to wind down our service, I uh, want to say thank you to everyone who's been of service this evening. Um, out there in virtual land, thank you to practitioners Gail Pallott and Bob Lyon for holding vigil for us. Our Zoom team, Mark Kroll, Alma Alvarez, and Brenda Jordan this evening, and Ray Regan, who's always there to help out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And on Facebook Live, thank you, beloved practitioner Liz Racy. Thank you so much for being there and supporting us all um, here in the sanctuary. Thank you to Adam, as always, for making sure we're seen and heard up here. To Doreen and Brenda, who's wearing yet another hat here in the sanctuary, working with Doreen. To Blair, who was here to help out with the technical aspects of service to Jamie and Sam. Thank you both. <laughs> Beautiful musical support. By the way, uh, you can get Jamie's music at Jamie Lula. That's J-A-M-I-L-U-L-A dot com. So you can get more inspiration that way if you would like. Um, and let's see. Well, thank you to all of you for joining us. I assume you're out there watching or Boy, did they play a trick on me this evening. <laughs> yeah, you know, keep me off my pedestal. <laughs> so uh, just a reminder again about donations. So you can call into the church uh, for 15 minutes after service, nhcrs.org forward slash give to make a donation online or text the word give to 818-457-3419 as well as, of course, uh, being able to mail in uh, donations. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after the service on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, get the Zoom link and join us there, and we can connect you one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner for prayer uh, in a private breakout room. You can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office and uh, option four is ministry of prayer, where you can leave a message of what you're asking uh, us to hold in consciousness for you. 
and uh, we check those every evening, so the emails go out to our uh, practitioners, so you'll be well supported in consciousness. Um, so next Wednesday evening, uh, again, on Facebook Live and Zoom, and my topic will be your true power. Uh, let's see, okay, so save the date for a really, really exciting movie night, Friday, June 18th at 7 p.m. So we'll be screening the movie Sound of Metal for limited, yeah, <laughs> for limited in-person attendance and remote viewing as well. So the event will be hosted by Paul Racy, who was nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in the film, and for, and, yep. <laughs> And his wife, Liz, who is glowing right now. She's hearing these faces. And well, um, so she will be leading a discussion with Paul uh, afterwards. So um, that'll be really a special event. We're so grateful, Liz, to you and Paul for uh, doing this for us. Tickets are $10, and we will be available for purchase on our website beginning tomorrow. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you either in person or on Zoom. So in-person attendance. We've started doing this uh, limited in-person attendance on Sundays here in the sanctuary at 9.45, so we're still having the one service at 9.45. Um, we will continue to broadcast on Zoom and Facebook Live, so for those who are still wanting to join that way, um, that's not going away. Now, up until now, we've been taking reservations, but it seems like people are starting to come back slowly and gradually, so we're not requiring reservations for this Sunday. Just be aware that we're following all the protocols. Uh, if you do decide to come, you know we will be um, asking everyone to wear a mask in the sanctuary. The, we've got the chair socially distanced. Um, so we are still uh, taking those precautions. And as far as uh, this Wednesday evening service, we will start opening it up in June. Uh, our target date right now is June 9th. So I probably should bring up again too, for those who weren't tuned in on Sunday, um, Dr. Mark announced the fact that I have decided to join my husband Joe in retirement mode uh, come the end of June, uh, June 30th. <laughs> but let me emphasize, because I think some people didn't hear this, I'm not leaving the church. I will be stepping down from my normal duties, but I will still stay active in certain ways. Uh, we just would like to have more freedom to spend time together. And when we're ready, just pick up and go to France for maybe two to three months instead of two to three weeks. <laughs> so, but that won't be immediately. You'll still be seeing me around. Please know that. Okay, what else do I need to let you know about? Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. So you can tune in 20 minutes before or stay on afterwards to visit with your fellow congregants. Men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 on Zoom. Uh, we continue to do our Zoom virtual meditation uh, every Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 in the morning. And um, for all of this information about what's going on, just visit our website, nhcrs.org, and you can get the links to the different events as well as sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. With that, just want to say once again, thank you for being with us this evening, and let's turn our attention inward one more time. Just giving thanks right in this moment for the blessings that I know we have received during this time together, because the presence of God has been there at the center of all that has unfolded. I know that through the various parts of this service, that we were <clears throat> touched in consciousness, awakened to that vibration of God at the center of our being. And I know that we carry that greater awareness of our divine nature out into our daily lives, and it ripples out into the world. 
And so I give thanks for all the blessings that we've received and how they expand outwardly into the world, into our lives, and beyond. And in gratitude for it all, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thanks again for being here. Let's close in song. <laughs> we rest in God and say